Okay, so moving on to our next part where we speak about the processor in a computer. Okay, so the processor primarily, I mean, the function of a processor is converting data, which is instructions into information. Okay, something that the user can understand. Okay, so like I told you previously, when you spoke about the RAM, the processor receives instructions from the RAM, okay, and then processes it into information, into something that is understandable, okay, so this is what we call executing, okay, it executes it, okay. A processor is made up of one or more central processing units, okay, so inside one processor you can find multiple CPUs, okay. In processors that are made up of more than one CPU, each CPU is referred to as a core, Okay, so in a processor, you will have multiple cores inside it. Okay, and each core is behaving like a processor. Okay, it sounds confusing. You have a processor inside the processor, you have multiple cores inside it, and each core is behaving like a processor. Okay, so for example, in a quad core processor, in a quad core processor, you have four cores, four cores working during each processor cycle. This means it can do up to four times as much work as a single core. So when I say that this processor is a quad core processor, it means inside this processor there are four cores. So you have four cores working together to execute your instructions. Okay, right. Now, why do we have multiple cores? That is what's explained over here. Okay, now guys, if you look in multi-core processors, in processors which have multiple cores, each core can run more slowly than a single core processor. Okay, so when you say single core processor, we are talking about the process that has only one core. Okay, so only one core is working to execute your instruction. But in a multi-core processor, you have multiple cores working to execute your instructions. Okay, this saves energy and produces less heat. Okay, so using this, so when you have a processor that has multiple cores, it actually saves energy and produces lesser heat or less heat. How does that happen? Okay, which means that the processor requires less cooling. Okay, since it's producing less heat, it, re it requires less cooling as well. Okay, this makes the computer quieter as the fan does not have to cool the system. Since less heat is being produced, the fan does not have to work very hard. Okay. Reducing the amount of time in which the fan is running also reduces the amount of energy that the system uses, making the system more environmentally friendly and further increasing the battery life of mobile devices. Okay, so I hope you understand one of the major benefits of having a multi-core processor is that it does not produce a lot of heat. So since it doesn't produce a lot of heat, the fan doesn't have to work very hard. Since the fan doesn't have to very work very hard, a lot of energy is not consumed, okay? So device becomes extremely energy efficient, okay? So guys, as you can see, this is the fan. Right below the fan, you have the processor because a processor is an extremely busy device. It produces heat. So right above your processor, you will have a fan to keep the processor cool, okay? Right. Next, what we have is processor speed is measured in clock cycles per second, okay? Processor speed is measured in clock. So when you purchase a processor, when you are looking for a processor, you will see what are the clock cycles per second, okay? This is the number of times per second the processor can carry out one or more instructions, okay? So when we say clock cycle per second, one clock cycle per second means one instruction can be executed in one second, okay? Clock cycles are measured in units. So for clock cycle, we use units such as hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz. We use these units to measure the clock cycle, to, to measure the speed of your processor, okay? So you can see over here, guys. So when I say one hertz, say when I say one hertz, it means, it means executing one instruction every second, okay? Let me take this to the next line. Okay, one hertz means executing one instruction every second. Okay, so our processor is not one hertz. Our processors are normally measured in gigahertz because they are that powerful. Okay, they are extremely powerful. So what you need to understand is how to do how to do the conversion. Okay, so thousand hertz is one kilohertz. Okay, 1000 kilohertz is one megahertz, 1000 megahertz is one gigahertz. 
Okay, so you need to understand how to do that conversion. I'll show you as well. We have a few questions coming up. Guys, I hope the function of processor is clear. Okay, a processor is simply responsible for converting data into information. So when it comes to measuring the speed of a processor, we use this unit, hertz, kilohertz, megahertz. So by seeing the value, by seeing, for example, if it is 20 megahertz, you know what it means. Okay, so you convert 20 megahertz into hertz. Okay, so it will come to, for example, it will come to 20 means it will be... 20 times 1,000, 20,000 times, times another 1,000. Okay, that will tell you how many hertz. Okay, so it will be about 2 million. Okay, it will be 2 million. So it means every second it can execute 2 million instructions. Okay, right. Let's do a question as well. Let's do a pass paper question. Describe the, the CPU. The smartphone has a 4 gigahertz CPU. Describe the function of a CPU. So you can say the function of a CPU is to execute instructions, which means converting data into information. Okay. So over here we have the same thing. Okay. Over here we have another question. Julian's PC has a 2.3 gigahertz processor. Explain what 2.3 gigahertz measures in this context. So 2.3 gigahertz is measuring the number of instructions that can be executed every second okay so if you want to know how much is 2.3 gigahertz it's very simple so 2.3 gigahertz let me just open up notepad so 2.3 gigahertz so from hertz we have to come down to megahertz so we multiply by thousand thousand megahertz now from thousand megahertz we have to come down to kilohertz so another thousand thousand kilohertz now from kilohertz we have to come down to hertz so another thousand thousand hertz okay so the answer will be 2.3 times 10 to the power of 9 hertz this is the amount okay so this is basically 2.3 billion so it means that every second the processor can execute 2.3 billion instructions okay this is what it means it means every second the processor can execute 2.3 billion instructions. Okay, or it can every second it can con it can convert 2.3 billion instructions into information. Okay. Right. Next, what we have is uh, okay. So next, the last part that we have over here is measuring your computer's memory. So we have storage devices, 10 GB, 5 GB. You know, we have all this. So how do we measure it? How do we I mean, what does it mean? 2 GB means what? 10 GB means what? Okay. So that is what this last part will be talking about. Now, quick clarification. You may not find this last part in your textbook because this last part was discussed in chapter one. However, I made some changes. I felt that this should be in chapter three, which is why in my videos, I have brought this to chapter number three. Okay. So in our final video, we will be going through how to measure your computer's memory. Okay. See you guys in the next video.